What's going on everybody? It's Kyle Vinick and we checking out the OnePlus Open. I got the Emerald Dust Color option and it also comes in Voyager Black. It was released in October of 2023 but I've been using this for about three weeks now. It weighs at 8.43 ounces. It has aluminum frame. It's rated IPX4 for splash resistant and the hinge has a durability rating of 1 million folds. I had some really good first impressions with this phone. I feel like a lot of the details are really thought out. From the size of the displays, to the plastic edges on the inner display, to the customizations when it comes to the split pages for the home screen, and we'll get into more later. So starting with the display, the cover display is an LTPO OLED measuring at 6.3 inches with a refresh rate of 120 hertz, with a peak brightness of up to 2800 nits. And the resolution is 1116 by 2484 pixels, with a PPI of 431. And then on top, we have a 32 megapixel ultra wide camera. The front camera is okay. I just feel like it's a little too soft. Overall quality of the cover display is really nice and vibrant. We got some settings like image sharpener, video color boost, and bright HDR video mode. And then within the screen color mode, we could go with natural, pro, or vivid. And I like how you have a preference, whether you want a cool or warm temperature. And with the brightness level, I feel like I have no issues when it comes to usage outdoors during the daytime. And now the ultimate reason why people get this phone is that foldable display. So it measures at 7.82 inches, resolution of 2268 by 2440, with a 426 PPI density. It's an LTPO AMOLED with a refresh rate of 120 hertz with the same peak brightness as the cover, which is 2800 nits. And aside from the punchy colors on the foldable display, we have an almost non-existent crease in the middle. When you're using this thing indoors, you could barely see it. And for a first generation for OnePlus, this is really impressive. I like how when you unfold the display, it maintains the same home screen and has a second page on the right side. And the hinge is strong and sturdy without feeling too stiff when you fold and unfold. Now the overall experience using this fold, it makes you want to interact with this phone more than a traditional single display smartphone. So this phone is packing a Snapdragon 8 Generation 2. And the GPU is an Adreno 740. And they hit you with a 16 gigabytes of RAM. This phone was released with the Android 13. And it's saying that it's upgradable to Android 14, which is the current version. But for some reason, I'm not getting that update. But on top of that, we have that Oxygen OS 13.2. And that delivers a real silky smooth experience. Pretty much everything I throw at this phone handles it really well, even those heavy apps. And even though this is not the latest Snapdragon, it does not miss a beat. And it comes well equipped with great multitasking features and automatic gaming modes. So we can have up to three different apps open in the split window mode. And I like how you can use gestures to reduce the size of the three apps so you can easily access all three apps at a reasonable size. I like how OnePlus knows what kind of user is interested in this phone because when you open a gaming app, a notification pops up saying that gaming mode is turned on. And when you interact with it, you have settings and information gamers would be interested in. I like how some heavy apps like Devil May Cry you can play within the cover screen, and when you unfold the display, it easily continues the gameplay without any interruptions. That's how it should be for most apps, and I'm just mentioning that because my experience with my previous foldable phone did not deliver that same fluidity. This phone is not perfect though because I do come across a little bugs. It's nothing too major, and it, honestly it only happened once. It was when I was trying to swipe up to go home from an app, and it was not registering, so I just lock my phone, unlock it, and everything was fine. And the camera on the foldable display is a 20 megapixel ultra wide. I pretty much never use this, but it's about the same quality as the camera you find on the cover display. And getting back to the body of this phone, on the top we have some speakers, we have a microphone, an IR blaster. On the right side we have the iconic mute switch. We have the volume buttons, the power button that's also integrated with a fingerprint sensor and then on the bottom we have more speakers sim tray microphone and the usb-c port on the back we got that main camera system we got a 48 megapixel wide camera another 48 megapixel that's ultra wide 
and a 64 megapixel telephoto lens. And that's going to give you a 3x optical zoom. So OnePlus teamed up with Hasselblad for this development. So getting straight to the quality of the photos, it's not the best, but it's still great quality. A lot of natural tones, it's not too exposed. But I will say the video quality is not that great. It's a little too grainy on the video quality and it can look a little funky. Also, the focus is not the best and that's why they have an action button laid out for you in the front of the camera app. So onto the battery of this phone, we got a 4805 milliampere hour battery. What's special about this phone is what's included is a 67 watt brick charger. And that's advertised to give you one to 100% just in 42 minutes. Since this is a power user phone, I feel like most people are gonna really push this phone to its limit. With heavy usage, I would say the battery life is about four hours. This phone is capable to last you a full day even if you're casually playing games throughout the day. And this phone does feature really good battery saving modes. Overall, this is a well-packaged smartphone. I would say this is a better foldable phone compared to what's out there today. They paid attention to the multitasking features. I feel like their split window feature is a lot more usable compared to having like eight apps open at the same time. And I forgot to mention that the cover display is as important as the foldable. Right now it's on sale for like $14.99, but still at this price, I feel like most people would have this as a daily driver. So having the cover display similar to a traditional smartphone, it makes it more easy to manage compared to a narrow cover display. With that being said, I would recommend this phone even for those who aren't a tech enthusiast. I feel like the simplicity of this UI, there's not a lot of learning curves to go through when using this foldable. The cover display makes it easy to manage for regular tasks and then when you have that foldable display, it just takes it to the next level. If you guys are interested in the case that I was using for this phone, it's a brand called Vopton. The back piece is uh, fake leather and the front piece is plastic and it comes with a built-in kickstand and it comes in handy when you're watching videos. Anyways, that's gonna do it for me. As always, comment down below. And let me know what you think about the video. And make sure you're subscribed for the latest. Later.